Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are launching the Biome Bouncers replacement. Um, now you notice that I've got this funky camera angle here and then this also like pretty good uh, camera angle. That is because it took me three separate launches to get this up before I realised I had everything going. Um, it was literally just things like at 40 kilometres I'd realised that I had not put any fuel lines on. Um, which meant that I didn't any have anywhere near enough fuel to get me out there to do the job that I intended to do Which is to go and collect all the science of Minmus. We've been at Minmus enough now uh, The next three or four episodes as they are short episodes are going to be entirely uh, devoted to collecting all the science on Minmus um, Visiting the anomalies just basically completing Minmus and then we can move on with like season two next week of going and um, well checking out the planets that said this vessel also has a secondary mission you will remember uh, again two three episodes ago we launched Big Brother that was going to be our um, wonderful Ion Minmus it was going to tell us all our biome information tell us where the anomalies were basically set everything up for completing Minmus but we had no sort of default power generation. It required me to open up my solar panels and then I ejected my, or any sort of batteries before I'd opened my solar panel. So it's got no, no power. It's just kind of cruising around with no way of actually powering itself. So what we're gonna do is he's, this vessel here, um, this vessel is the spirit of defiance because obviously with the biome bouncer not being quite as good as it was, uh, I thought I'd do that. Now the more astute of you would have noticed that on the way up here uh, I did almost all of it at half throttle. Um, th this is almost entirely through negligence. It was only on my staging that has just happened that I was like oh no my, my throttle's only at half. Uh, it was because I was trying to counteract like how hard my my uh, solid boosters were pushing. Obviously down in the lower lower reaches of the atmosphere we don't want to go too fast because the faster you're going the higher the, the air resistance is uh, and thus the more fuel you need to use. So I just Kind of eased back through through the lower atmosphere so we, we weren't like punching through quite so hard and then just completely forgot about it and didn't actually end up uh, going back up to full throw which unfortunately because this meant i was spending more time fighting the air resistance instead of getting through at the ottoman speed it was uh, basically this was all about air resistance because of that i ended up with not quite as much fuel here which is going to lead to uh, some emergency staging halfway through my uh, altitude transfer burn Yes. Anyway, here I am mucking about with the maneuver nodes. Now, as Minmus is so far away, the tiniest of movements at this end of the orbit mean the biggest of movements at that end of the orbit, which means that it all has to be a bit finessey, which means that I, I take forever doing it. Uh, not ideal, but that's the way it is. Um, and a, a small bit of time acceleration puts us at the optimum burn point, so we just let loose, we open up. Now, if it wasn't for a small amount of uh, throttle mismanagement, we should be able to get our altitude all the way up to Minmon orbit. But as I said, we had that small, um, small issue on the way up. But there's nothing major, nothing to really worry about. We're, it just means that we're going to have to go into our landing fuel um, slightly earlier than I would like. But as we have a re refuel point on Minmus, I don't think this is that much of an issue. Though these engines are tiny and that means it's going to take forever. So what we might do is jump forwards a little bit uh, towards the actual Minmon orbit. Because you've all watched me do these transfer burns enough now. So here we are screeching our way down to uh, Minmon Periap so that we can circularise our orbit. We're at the closest point to the surface of Minmon. Because obviously whatever altitude you do your circularisation burn is the, is the altitude you end up in a circular orbit. Which isn't great. Um, so now, uh, once we've achieved circular orbit, and like, yeah, we're, we're in there, nice. I'm going to find my position node, uh, my maneuver node, and we're going to um, try and sync up with the big brother. Uh, now, it turns out that I am like 177 degrees off, which I, I believe is about as bad as you get. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't, yeah, 180 being obviously the worst you could possibly do, so 177, what's that, hey? Um, anyway, so this means I need to do a whole load of shuffling around with the manoeuvre nodes, and I don't know if any of you guys out there have noticed that when you get um, to 90 degrees from where you were, your your um, markers start doing different things, like on the manoeuvre nodes, you know where it explodes out and you've got the six directions you can, you can drag from? Well, once you get past 90 degrees, suddenly you're using your... Um, 
inclination things to 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 lower and raise your your, your other side of orbit and your 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 retrograde and prograde suddenly are turning the orbit and yeah this was all very confusing to me at the time it took me a little bit bit of time to figure out exactly what was doing what was going on there but nay bother i got it all sorted and uh now all we need to do is warp our way around to the other side of the orbit now i'd missed a whole load of uh, maneuver nodes up to this point so you're going to watch me be very very heavy on the alarm clock use because th this I'm down to, to minimal fuel and I really really want um really want to be able to take get this down there without blowing it up by like smashing it into the floor because I ran out of fuel a kilometer up. Um yeah, so here we are making the maneuver burn. Uh, I I was thinking maybe RCS might be the way forwards, but of course, as I say, 177 degrees out of out of line. Uh it's gonna take some actual rocket power at some point. I, I realized this at the maneuver node. Uh, where I kick in my, my rocket engines on the back of this thing and there we go Perfectly synced orbit. Hopefully. I, I really do hope uh, So what we need to do now is get down to the other side and start matching up um, closest encounters um, now the, Neither this nor the big brother have docking ports on them um, Which makes it very difficult for, for being able to do this sort of thing and um, Apart from I've got the Kerbal Attachment System put on now, which is great, which means that like my Kerbal can get out and do an EVA repair mission, which, which is great. That's what, what it's all about. I, I, it is my favourite thing about the Kerbal Attachment System, is you can actually like just get out there and do repairs on the spot instead of having to like scrap the entire mission and start again. Um, which, yeah, should be used to. I've been playing Kerbal for a, a, a fair... Well, I don't even know how long I've been playing Kerbal for, but I've been playing Kerbal for a long time now, a couple of years or so, something like that. And, yeah, I, I should be used to this, but it's always nice to be able to just, like, mid-mission go, I need to fix this, and then go and fix it. Okay, so we jumped forward, um, oh, I don't know, half hour or so. It, it, it was, well, maybe not even that far. We, uh, half an orbit. We've gone around half an orbit until we're at the uh, closest intersect time so that I can go just beyond it and then start mucking around with my orbit to see where we get closest encounter. Um, now, this is done quite simply just by raising and lowering uh, my, my other side from the closest encounter until the two markers line up just like that. Now, I almost always use uh, RCS for this because the the amount of um, the amount of tolerance when you're getting close is is very very low. You, you need to be able to literally just like far out of the window and be able to push yourself by that amount to be able to get the right. Uh, the closest distance uh, I do believe on this particular encounter we are actually coming in at something like 300 meters to be close enough uh, indeed uh, with this alarm going off here we should be able to see how close we are if we can spot the uh, the other vessel at any point uh, and in fact before I even spot it the first thing I'm going to do is slow down my relative velocity by pointing at my prograde as the target for target reticule tells me and then go backwards because obviously if I'm pointing forwards and thrusting backwards I'm going to slow down. Thankfully it's kind of a two for one deal here whilst I was also uh, matching up relative speeds I pointed a little beyond like my relative marker uh, so that I could push the travel markers towards my location markers. Now in real terms this means I pushed my yellow one so it lined up on the pink one if you're really wondering what I was that about. And <clears throat> now all I need to do is waste some time drifting close. Now I could waste uh, rocket fuel pushing myself close, but that would just mean that I'd have to then like turn around and boost the other way, which would probably mean that I would wash the spaceship with my exhaust fuel and then push that further out of orbit and it would all get messy. So we're just gonna use RCS until we're like this close and then Jeb's gonna get out and he's gonna be like, right, I know what I'm doing here guys. I've done this in the simulator so many times. First thing we're gonna do is go and have a look at what's going on here. See if we've got a nice flat panel to attach things to, which I did. And then we're gonna come across and um, after a small fly by because I was a little heavy handed on the jetpack, come in and grab one of the singular panels from underneath and attach that on so that we have power. Um, because it's all about getting that little bit of power so we then can do a systems check and find out exactly what it is that Jeb needs to fix. Uh, I had a, a small issue at this point where I just couldn't seem to um, select the solar panel. It, it wouldn't let me let me put this down. Now, thankfully I had noticed earlier that if you press the G key you can pick things up and put it down. So in a, in a second, in fact I've already gone ahead and done it, you, you'll see that I had uh, placed the 
the, the, the solar panel in the air, well, in the air, in, in space, I suppose. I just kind of left it there. Uh, and then you used it not being on me to be able to select it and attach it in, in that manner. Um, awesome. Right, so hopefully now Jeb's going to be going back um, after making sure the solar panel is in the sun. This is kind of the main point of putting it there. Uh, and hopefully, yes... Uh, by moving that middle solar panel, I have completely made sure that my, my ship is well balanced for landing, because obviously that's where we really, really need the balance. Uh, and then we're going to hop in and come over here. Right, awesome. We're straight off and my solar panels are actually broken. So they won't actually it won't actually be doing it under its own panel. Uh, Jeb's going to have to get out, grab one of these. You'll notice that I brought six, no, eight. Eight with me anyway. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really worried about not having the bits. Um, I, I brought them specifically for this because I'd also managed to break stuff on the uh, science depot thing as well. Uh, so Jeb's cruising in nice and slow and it uh, doesn't take him long to, to attach the solar power there. And then we're going to grab the old one off and just lob it right, off to the side. So we gave it some sideways momentum. Now, I do realise this left us maybe with a little bit of a problem as in like uh, after it all goes round in one orbit, it could very well end up smashing up because I gave it a push, but we're going to go round a circle. So the point... Yeah, the point where I pushed it off is where we're going to come back to. Uh, the only way I can explain this is by showing you circles on my desk, and that, that's that's not going to help you guys at all. So rather than embarrass myself by going around in circles again, I'm going to take us to this maneuver node, where I am trying to bring my what is quite a severe polar orbit into line with my equatorial um, refueling base, uh, which is quite nice. It turns out the maneuver nodes um, are all but useless at this uh, they're, they're, they're good for telling you the rough direction you have to point at but if you don't want to smash into the floor don't follow what the maneuver nodes say when you're doing a 90 degree orbital incline but there we go i've got this uh, nice and lined up over the top of it i think so what we're going to do now is bring our periaps down so we're skimming down over but over the base as close as possible because then we don't have to worry about like free falling down from the speed we've just like killed all our orbit orbital velocity from we can just like be at the ground and slow ourselves down um which hopefully that that will be how it works out nicely but there we go perfect orbit set up we can spot the mountain in the distance there that that is the one at the edge of the flats which means it's the one that we want to be sailing majestically over when we're looking for our landing spot just literally over the brow of that there hill all right so hopefully we're going to uh, time accelerate our way down bang on old me was straight on it and we're going to start looking for um, our landing spot. So here we go I'm over the top of the mountain we were just looking at um, and we're going to slow time down and make sure that we're, we're, we're having a decent approach hopefully. Um, I was on, I'll be honest I was expecting me to switch to map view at this point so it looks like we're going to do it by eye from orbit which shouldn't be too too difficult. Ah, here, here's the map view. Uh, so already I've noticed that I'm going far too far towards the south pole so we'll uh, point our nose towards the south sorry far too far towards the North Pole so we point our nose to the South Pole and push our orbit, uh, orbit tilt down that way so that we can end up flying over the top of it if that is uh, entirely possible. I, I always manage to miss it by like a little bit less than a kilometre. Uh, you will notice also as I am just noticing that my flag is not stuck in the ground at this present moment in time. Uh, indeed it's so high up that even when I do land it's not loaded so nothing's going to change about that for the moment. Um, and indeed that's a little bit of a spoiler for later on um, like in another episode we'll, we'll find out what the deal with that flag is because it's floating up in the sky and I want to know what the deal with that flag is, right? Anyway, enough with the mysteries of the Kerbal Universe, it's time to land this sucker. Uh, we're still far too far out to really be doing anything serious, so we're going to uh, time accelerate our way in. Well, it turns out that within 10 kilometers I've done this time. Uh, and I'm going to start ever so slightly uh, lofting my, my altitude a little bit higher so that I can extend out the arc. So I'm not like plummeting downwards quite so much. Um, because obviously the further out the arc is extended the less you need to like buoy yourself back up buoy yourself back up push yourself back up when you're getting close to the floor you can just like push back along your orbit instead uh so here here's the little uh the loading judder uh, as i call it it's just a little freeze up as within like 2.3 kilometers of each other uh and then i go sailing past and it's like you you fool steve you should have nailed it but that's all right what we're gonna do is just carry on at quarter throttle for some 
reason and um, slowly bring ourselves down to, to, to zero speed relative to, to everything. Um, now hopefully before I hit the floor I'm going to swap to um, the uh, surface velocity marker. Uh, I know that the, the ground velocity marker will read roughly, the, not the ground, the, the target velocity marker will read roughly the same as my ship is parked on the ground, or the Bion Banter is parked on the ground. Um, but it's it's not going to be exact because I'm falling relative to the, the, the ship and it's up on a hill and I'm a little bit further down. So everything's going to work out just a little bit not quite right. But that's okay. I mean, I'm using landing gear for, for legs. <laughs> well, landing gear for, for, for wheels. And those things are tough as nails. Um, until I sent this ship up, I didn't quite realise how good they were. But we will get to that in later episodes because at the moment all I'm really trying to do is land this sucker on the floor and give myself some forward momentum towards the target because let's be honest, I don't want to hit the floor at a dead stop, I want to hit the floor rolling towards the, the base, right? Um, anyway, Jebediah is bringing it down, the floor is just a wash with the lights that come off my, my vessel, um, I never seem to get the light balance just right. I mean, what I'm actually looking for is kind of like headlight beams off in the... Off in the the elf in front of me off in the future that's not quite what i meant um th that's what i kept on trying to say anyway but yeah th that looks about right but when you're coming down for a landing it it's it's not great it's just like great big white sheeny thing um which is kind of all right but it, it gives you the distance if nothing else i suppose but anyway there we go we can see that the uh the the base is in front of me and all that really is left for me to do is just roll up and refuel on the um on the refueling depot so what i'm going to do is say thank you very much for joining me for this repair and landing adventure i will see you next time where we're going to start well first we're going to send a shuttle up and then we're going to start collecting all the science around but i will tell you about that next time Bye! Just in case you don't believe me, here I am at base.